This tutorial explains the vertical takeoff and landing procedures for surface level and elevated helipods. These procedures are used for helipods located on the ground or on a raised structure with minimum dimensions of at least 15 by 15 meters or 20 meters in diameter. First, let's look at the takeoff procedure. It must be flown in such a way that the nose points into the wind as far as the obstacles will allow. First, we check the high and air mode is selected. In older helicopters, it is the Cat A button. We need to check our altitude. Here we have 1900 feet. This is important to calculate the takeoff decision point. It is 120 feet more, so note takeoff decision point is at 2020 feet. So we establish a hover flight above the helipad center. Note the torque indication. Here we have 59%. Hover backwards about 3 meters. This is usually the length of the H. Climb vertically to 10 feet above the helipad and hover again. Then start climbing rearwards with a rate of about 300 feet per minute. You will need approximately 10% more torque than in hover flight. Maintain the takeoff area in sight. So we could go back there if an engine should fail before the decision point. Remember, our decision point is 2020 feet. When we have reached it, we increase power by collective lever to takeoff power and simultaneously take the nose down to accelerate to 65 knots. Should one engine fail after the decision point, we will continue the flight under one engine in operative conditions. The graphic shows the essentials again. Preparation is also important for a landing. We want to approach against the wind as much as possible. To do this, we need to know the wind direction. We also need the altitude of the helipad. Here it is 1,900 feet again. With this, we calculate important points. 500 feet above the helipad, so we note 2,400 feet. 300 feet above the helipad, note 2,200 feet. And the landing decision point, 180 feet above the helipad, so we note 2,080 feet. Don't forget to set the correct QNH to your altimeter. We initiate the approach at 500 feet above the helipad and a speed of 60 knots. We descend and decelerate. At 300 feet above the helipad, we should be at 40 knots, rate of descent less than 400 feet per minute. 30 knots on the landing decision point, which we have calculated here at 2080 feet, rate of descent less than 400 feet per minute. After passing the decision point, we decrease slowly to arrive at 4 feet hover above the landing point and go to touchdown. In the case of an engine failure before the decision point, we go around with one engine. After the decision point, we can still reach the landing point. Why bother with the altitudes when there is also a radio altimeter? Good question, here is the answer. This works fine with a helipad on the ground in a flat terrain. 
takeoff decision point and landing decision point are then uniformly 120 feet. However, this method cannot be used with an elevated helipad. Because here the radio altimeter measures the height to the ground and not to the higher helipad. It is therefore recommended to choose the arithmetical solution straight away. Have a good flight and many happy landings.